Welcome to the Autosportradio.com 2021 show. Strangely enough, we're still at the Grand King Race Shops, which is home of the Top Gun Racing. The car is being garaged here and worked on here. So if you're driving by the area, stop in and take a look. They're located at 8155 Crawfordsville Road in Speedway. Today's show is presented by Honda and Honda HPD, the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, the SVR, uh, <laughs> SVRA, the NTT IndyCar Series, the Gilbert's Pub and Eatery and Speedway, and VP Insurance. If you've uh, wondered why do these guys and gals like to drive these cars at high speed, why don't you take a ride in the Indy Racing Experience two-seater? You won't go to 230 miles an hour, but you'll go faster enough to get your attention and go, wow, this is kind of fun. You can go to IndyRacingExperience.com on the internet and look, uh, find a date that works for you and book a ride. And in the promo box, put DK1 for a 50% discount. Or you can call Sean at the office, the number is 317-243-7171. Uh, we need to say some words and to keep in mind uh, Bob Jenkins, who has got serious health problems, as does Robin Miller. If you can think positive thoughts to help either one of them out or both of them, do it. I know you can hardly wait to go see a dentist. Everybody says, wow, that's my favorite place to go. Well, most likely it's not. But I can get you a place that will be the Indy Dental Group. Indy 500 veteran Dr. Jack Miller and his wife, Dr. Liz Lewis, have a spectacular practice, and the people that work for them, the techs they have, phenomenal. Give them a call, make an appointment at the Indy Dental Group, 317-846-6125. Is it time yet to have your uh, roof replaced? Why don't you get an inspection to find out in a free estimate? Just call Ted at Reed Construction or Reed Roofing. You can reach him at 317-500-3370. He'll arrange for an inspection. And if you need, he'll get you an, uh, an appraisal. So give him a call. 317-500-3370. That's my IT genius, Ted. Talk to him. My computer repairman, the A-plus computer doctor, is uh, has an office. And the address is 549 Fleming Street, which is about maybe a mile east of uh, Lyndhurst on West Washington. Uh, give him a call, tell him your problem, bring it in, he fix it. Or if he can't get it there, he makes house calls. His number is 317-938-7711. Is it time to uh, renew your insurance on your home, your car, or your commercial property? Do what many of us have done. Call Mike Pardee at VP Insurance. you find you get better coverage for less money. He's located at 5004 West 16th Street in Speedway. Give him a call, tell him what you need, what you got. He'll help you. Number is 317 Two four eight zero zero seven zero, and if you're interested in SVRA and the uh, the uh, Trans Am series, it's back to life again. And I'm told by uh, Tony Perella, who owns it, that they're getting as many as sixty plus cars enter. They will be running at the uh, uh, big <coughs> excuse me <coughs> big machine uh, Music City Grand Prix in Nashville. So the Trans Am will be there along with uh, now Gor uh, 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 Robbie Gordon's truck series, Trans Am, Indy cars, uh, and uh, lights. SVRA will be performing this weekend, the 16th to 18th at Bra Brainerd International Raceway in Brainerd, Minnesota. The 22nd to the 25th, they'll be in Portland at Portland International Raceway. And they will be at the Watkins Glen on September 8th to the 12th. But just remember, there'll be a Nashville, Tennessee, so stop in and see them. While you're at it, go to svra.com, and you need to subscribe to Speed Tour Magazine. Spectacular magazine, great pictures, great stories. It's well worth the subscription. Trust me, it's not a cheap little rag. It is a well-put-together, well-published magazine. If you have a vintage car or you'd like to get one, give the Grand King Shop a call. They can help you on both areas. If you have one, it needs restoring, they can do that. If you're looking for one, they can help you find one. So give them a call. The number is 317-820-3595. My guest today is somebody I've spoken with on a couple of occasions. He is the executive vice president, general manager, and probably in charge of promotions at Worldwide Technology Raceway, which used to be called Gateway. And of course, I'm talking about Chris, Chris Blair. Chris, it's a pleasure to have you on the program. I'm glad you had enough time to sit and chat with me a bit. Yeah, it's always great to be on the show and always enjoy talking to you. 
Um, last year, was it a total disaster? Because you have a number of facilities on your property that you could run, no fans, but did, did the track have activity? Yeah, actually, it worked out fairly well for us. We were able <laughs> to resume racing uh, middle of June last year. And what we noticed is really, we were, we were very fortunate last year in that once we were able to start racing, <laughs> the, uh, the weather uh, was great the rest of the year for the most part, uh, uh, up until the end of September. So uh, we basically, we eliminated what is usually our riskiest time, which is April and May. Uh, you know, we didn't have that uh, luxury, which when I went back and looked at the weather from last year, uh, there really wasn't a lot of weekends that we would have been operational anyhow because of, of the weather situation. So when we were able to get up and running, uh, we had some uh, successful event weekends throughout the year. Uh, you, you can accommodate a number of racing series, drag racing, of course, obviously you've got the oval for the Indy cars, but you have still a karting track and various other venues that can be used. Yeah, we do. Uh, you know, the, our, the track that is utilized the most here uh, at, at Worldwide Technology Raceways are drag strip, uh, which normally it's an operation three to four days a week. Uh, now, as far as on the, the Carplex, it's also it, it's open six to seven days a week, uh, almost all, throughout the, the summer. So it stays busy as well. Most of the time it, with it, it's uh, retail uh, arrive and drive uh, participation. But we do have race nights three nights a week um, for that for that venue as well. Uh, then we have the road course. Uh, you know, I mentioned the drag strip. We also utilize the drag strip pit area for autocross events and uh, different activities in the parking lot. We have a lot of drifting events here. And, you know, we're the only uh, track uh, on the planet that uh, hosts NHRA, NASCAR, and IndyCar. And then you throw in the fact that we do host the Formula Drift Series. Uh, we showcase a lot of the top flight racing programs here in the United States. How has your attendance been since you opened up this year? Is, is it ten, have people been saying, thank heavens we're out, let's go? Yeah, what we've noticed, we haven't really had any of our big events. And unfortunately, uh, a lot of the special events where I would have had or where I was anticipating large crowds uh, were impacted by weather. Uh, our drag strip uh, has a, a, a large uh, nostalgia event each May that it was it's it's been rained out twice now uh, as well as some of our pro mod races that we do over at the drag strip uh, we've had some issues with weather for those uh, what we have found is that on a lot of our regional level type events uh, the participation has been very very strong this year as well as the uh, spectator attendance I mean those aren't necessarily events where we'll pack the grandstands but we do have uh, you know, a very large uh, fan base that supports uh, some of those events and those so we've had some successful event weekends here and of course the owner of the track uh, curtis francois and his company are hugely behind you and and uh, being as he's well known in the area it doesn't take much to get the word around town i wouldn't think yeah we that's one of the great things about it having a st louis based owner and curtis francois who, uh, you know st louis based uh, sponsor with the world by technology and dave stewart and that group uh, the support we receive from Bomberito Automotive Group, uh, iHeart uh, is a sponsor of our, our NASCAR event. So we have you know a lot of uh, strong uh, voices here in the St. Louis market that it, it makes it a hometown racetrack. We're not viewed as a, a corporate entity that's just here, uh, you know, the carpet bagger type thing. We're at, it's actually a home based racetrack. We all live here, uh, and we all believe in this market. Um, the the upcoming IndyCar event. Have ticket sales started yet? Yeah, we started ticket sales uh, towards the end of uh, last year. So we always do a big push, uh, starting with uh, Black Friday, the day after Thanksgiving. And uh, that's when we really launch uh, our sales to the public. Uh, and we've been... Uh, it's kind of difficult to compare year to year because 2020 was so crazy, but we have been uh, monitoring where we were in comparison with 2018 and 2019. Uh, and 2019 was our biggest IndyCar event to date. Uh, and right now we're right on target with the same numbers. Uh, it kind of goes back and forth. Uh, one week we'll maybe down a hundred tickets. The next week we may be up a hundred tickets uh, in comparison to 2019. Uh, and, you know, all, all of our promotions are going really well right now. I anticipate it being uh, another very successful event. Uh, the one thing I'm looking at, too, and we're getting ready to crank up some more of our marketing uh, on this particular event, uh, primarily to the IndyCar fan base and in the outlying markets such as Indianapolis. And we're going to go into Iowa to uh, 
promote more this year than we have in the past is the fact that this is the first oval race since the Indianapolis 500 and, you know, one of only three oval races all year. And, you know, I always like to say we're the uh, IndyCar Oval World Finals. So <laughs> we're going to be pushing that again. Uh, you know, each week, uh, you know, if you're reading uh, anything from, you know, Miller's Mailbag to the just the general talk on the different racing sites, I'm sure you hear it a lot, is everybody wants more and more oval races you know, because that's what the sport was built on. That's the foundation of IndyCar racing was the ovals. Uh, you know, that's one of the challenges I've been putting out there with a lot of different uh, people in the sport and a lot of the fans and saying, you say that, then I need you to come to the event. Let's pack the grandstands. Let's get more people to the oval races. And if you want more oval races, uh, a promoter at a track in another location is going to be looking at us and seeing if, if they see the grandstands packed here in St. Louis it's going to get them to open their eyes to IndyCar racing with the possibility that they would host another oval race. So it's one of those things, if you want something, you need to support what you have. And so that's kind of the challenge that I'm putting out to a lot of the fans is, you know, let's just not talk about it. Let's, let's actually do something. Let's pack the grandstands. Let's draw attention to how great oval racing is with IndyCar. And, and you, of course, I'm sure you saw the uh, article in Racer Magazine where Roger has said he wants to increase ovals. Yes. logical and and i know i'm sure i hear about it all the time and i got to think if i hear it they got to be hearing it as well and i think he will pay attention and do what's best for the series because that's where he started is on ovals exactly and that's the thing about it still the, the the whole foundation of the sport is based on the indianapolis 500 and we need to have racers who have oval experience before they get to the indianapolis 500 so uh Worldwide Technology Raceway is the perfect venue for them to uh, get tuned up for the following May. I think it would be an ideal place for two races, one before before May and one where you are now in August. Or, you know, the end of August would be, they've done it before, run two races on the same track on different dates. So it's not, it wouldn't be the first time. Well, now you're asking me to have to work another weekend and I'm not really up for that. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I hadn't thought of that part of it. Um do you think the d new drivers that have joined the series this year, uh, Romain Grosjean and uh, Jimmy uh, Johnson, have added anything, have gotten fans' oh. interest that you've seen the results of? Yeah, that's the one thing that I'm looking at. I'm, I'm really excited about this new crop of drivers. You know, Jimmy, obviously, because of, you know, all he's accomplished in the sport, uh, the timing is absolutely perfect for uh, Romain based on the success of the Netflix series, uh, F1 Drive to Survive. I have people who that I know that you know, live in my neighborhood, people I come across uh, all over the place that were ne never really racing fans, but they were Netflix fans. They started watching that show and they saw the episode of what happened to him last year. And, you know, if there was ever uh, someone who's uh, having a serious crash that scares the heck out of you, uh, that they're benefiting from it, he's he gained a lot of notoriety because of his ability to walk away from that crash. Uh, and when I'm telling him he's going to be here, there's an excitement about it. And that's one of the things I was talking to the IndyCar advance team, and I'm willing to use him as much as possible to try to promote this race and sell tickets, hoping that we can be knocking on the door of some fans who may have never even uh, known about IndyCar racing, but they know who he is through that series. Uh, you know, then obviously the Jimmy Johnson connection, there's a lot of uh, fans who are looking at that. I still uh, keep hoping that I'll get the call one day that Jimmy's going to run an oval. I'd love to have him here. Uh, you know, we, we keep, uh, we keep uh, hoping for that every night when I say my prayers, I pray that Jimmy Johnson's going to run the oval race at uh, worldwide technology raceway, but uh, we'll see if, if that one gets answered. Um, but, you know, the, and then I'm looking at some of these other drivers and just some of the things McLaughlin, I mean, the following he has internationally is tremendous. Uh, I think that draws a lot of eyes on what the sport's doing from, you know, if, as we're wanting to reach out and go to other, other areas and, you know, possibly even doing some international promotion to get people to come here, uh, especially if you have a race the week before in Indy and then they can come here. Uh, I mean, that's the perfect road trip for a lot of people. Uh, and then are these other F1 transplants that are coming over, the Kevin Magnusons of the world, some, some of these guys. I mean, there's some excellent opportunities uh, for us to really uh, draw attention to the sport. Of course, the series seems to be drawing new teams. As you know, Top Gun is looking to come to your place uh, after yeah. running the road course at Indianapolis. Uh, and there's some other teams in the works of coming together and a couple of teams are looking to add cars. 
So by next year, it wouldn't surprise me if we get to 28, 29 cars. Oh, that'd be Indy cars, sir, it's growing. And if people don't pay attention, wow, it's growing. So I think it's great. Yeah, it's the perfect time. And again, there's so much talent that's out there. And the competitiveness of the series, when you take a look at what's happened here so far, the number of teams that have won, the number of uh, you know, unique drivers that have won races, and there's really not a dominant uh, force anywhere out there. Uh, that, so that speaks volumes for the just the overall level of competition, the rules packages that are in place, the job that Jay, Jay Fry and his team have done. Uh, it's, it's an exciting time to be an IndyCar fan. You know, to think that you've gone from – what first off, what attracted you to motorsports? Because according to your bio, that's where you wanted to go. Come hell or high water, you want to get involved in racing. Did you ever drive? No, never did. Other than, you know, played around with a few cars here and there whenever there was an opportunity that presented itself. But, uh, you know, one of the things early on was uh, uh, that my dad told me that the first time he ever saw me in a race car, I was completely cut off. and. <laughs> And we weren't rich by any means, so I needed to make sure I got every nickel I could possibly get. But, <laughs> but no, um, it, it was one of those things. I had a lot of friends that raced, and I just knew the challenges of what they had to go through. It was, you know, I, I worked on some dirt late model teams when I was, uh, you know, 14, 15 years old, and uh, just always loved uh, the sport. And it was just a, kind of a natural uh, progression. I, it, I looked, uh, when I was going into college, I'd looked at, uh, uh, going to law school and doing a couple other things, but I kept finding myself during the summer months working on racing projects and it just uh, kind of fell in place. Yeah, it's amazing. You graduated from college with a degree in history, which really works well. But yeah, especially you made, if you're playing Trivial Pursuit, I can just yeah, you know, re- anybody in Trivial Pursuit. Yeah. You realize you couldn't make a whole lot of money doing that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you've written for papers, you've been an announcer, you've been a promoter, you've worked at day. Tri- uh, dirt tracks. You've been involved with the uh, Monster Truck Series. You went off to Las Vegas. You worked there, and from there is where you came to where you are now. So you've been to everything. You've experienced most everything, from announcing to writing to promoting. So for you to be where you are today, seems to me that Mr. Francois made a good choice. He's got a man that knows pretty much all the corners of the, of the uh, series and the project. Well, I always look at, I'm the one who got lucky in, in meeting Curtis. We were uh, at an NHRA track operators meeting before he even purchased the racetrack. That's where we met. And uh, we hit it off uh, from there and it just one thing led to another. So it was, uh, uh, you know, the perfect uh, uh, opportunity for me. And uh, I've tried to make sure that every day that I don't disappoint him. And we've had some uh, pretty good success here. Now, you just said that your dad told you that if you ever got in a race car, he saw you, you would lose it all. Yeah, <laughs> your son drives. He tries to. Unfortunately, uh, as he got older, the the race cars got more expensive. Uh, we were currently, <laughs> you know, we've been waiting to put together our Silver Crown motor now for a couple of years, and he's busy. He's doing a lot of work now with drones. Uh, he's uh, working with Dirt Vision and the World of Outlaws, flying the drones for them uh, on their broadcast. He's also done some work for uh, NHRA and Fox and some of their things. So he's he has a career in racing, which is great because. Uh, what I love about what Austin's doing now is when he leaves the house to go to the races uh, and to be involved, he comes home with a paycheck and it doesn't cost me any money. When we were going to race and play with the silver crown car or with the midget that we had, uh, it cost me money when we pulled out of the driveway. So uh, I told him, I said, I can't keep doing this. And uh, so we, uh, luckily, you know, I'm, I'm really happy of the fact that of everything he's been through, that he still wants to have a career in racing. Uh, I've tried to get him to get involved on the promotional side. He says he doesn't want to deal with the stress and he wants to be more on the artistic side of things. And so, uh, you know, he's, uh, he's doing the, the drone work uh, with those guys. And then he actually was, uh, he was looking forward to the indie because he was going to help out uh, Billy and the gang with uh, Top Gun. And uh, he's, he's wanting to get involved more and more with the, that on that side of the sport too. So you never know what he's going to end up doing. You know, it's interesting that he's into the drone because when you watch some of these events, you wonder, how they tell them, like, ah, there are drones flying overhead. Mm-hmm. You know, I've tried to fly one, and I, it cost me the first three times I did, I had to go buy another one. Yeah. So it's, well, that's, that's what's funny is he, he started doing this for the outlaws a little over a year ago, about a year and a half ago, and everybody was talking about how great he was at it. And I told him, well, you didn't see all the crashed ones that were in our backyard over the <laughs> year he was practicing. So, he, you know, that's one of the good things that he does. He, where he has raced before, 
Uh, he knows what race cars are going to do. He can understand, he understands the aerodynamics of, of a sprint car and how to fly over top of them. Uh, you know, he's FAA uh, commercially licensed. So he went through, did all the proper things in order to be able to do this. And uh, it shows in the, the quality of what he's doing. So I'm, I'm really proud of, uh, of what he's been able to accomplish. It's amazing how this sport has changed. You, I mean, when I first come in, nobody knew what a drone was, let alone now they use them during the races. And and the pictures they can get are phenomenal. Actually, it's really, really quite good. You miss you know, a lot of things in your overhead looking at what's going on. I find that very interesting to watch myself. I know one thing he's been working on. He, he, what he has done, he, he doesn't use your normal uh, uh, Hollywood type drones. He actually takes racing drones because he used to race those as, during the wintertime. And he's putting cameras on them. So his goal is to create a drone that's fast enough that he could keep up with an IndyCar and, and do some uh, filming. So we'll see if that ever happens. He's been able to work with the outlaws and stick with those. So we're, we're trying to develop that. The, the mad science lab is in our basement of our house and he's <laughs> constantly building new stuff. So we'll see, see where it goes. Well, that's good. That's interesting. What, uh, how do you look at the IndyCar series? Do you think it's progressing as you would like to see it, that it's growing as it should, the attendances and the eyes on, I mean, this program has gotten a lot of eyes because for the last year and a half, people had nothing else to do. And they'd look on their computer and they found us, strangely enough. So I got to think, you know, the same thing with, with motorsports, with what's happened and, and you know, people are coming out, they're able to get out. These places around here are packed now that people could go. They had a, a very good crowd at the Speedway and could no doubt have sold it out where they allowed and I got to think that uh, you being the last oval in the series and only the third one to begin with, you got to have a good crowd of people come out to see it. And I've said the same thing. You like ovals, go to an oval race so they know that people are interested to go. Yeah. Now the series is, is absolutely fantastic. And, you know, I, I give a lot of the credit to, uh, to Jay uh, for our, uh, Jay's approach to everything he does is uh, it's always well thought out and he, any, anything I've ever seen him work with, he puts the, it's best interest at heart. And when he first came into this, however many years ago that it was, uh, we saw the change and, and realized that he has a goal and uh, you know, I'm very thankful that Jay got us, got this thing off and going. We wouldn't have an IndyCar race if it wasn't for Jay Fry. Jay came here. He believed in us. He believed in our venue. He believed in the city. And uh, it, it was a lot of lobbying by him and some of the drivers that made this possible. Uh, so, you know, that was, you know, Jay coming on board. I think that was the, the catalyst for a lot of this. And then, you know, a few years into it, then Roger Penske takes over the series. I mean, you couldn't ask for anything any better. Uh, you know, it's, it's unfortunate. I feel like the, the COVID situation last year slowed down a lot of growth for a lot of folks. Uh, but, you know, I think coming out of this, I think we might be in a good space. We're you know, seeing some good TV numbers. Uh, hopefully that translates to, you know, people in the grandstands. That's, that's our, our main key. Um, so I'm optimistic. I think if we can deliver a good product and, the, like I said, the, the rule changes that they've been making uh, recently, uh, I think there's some great opportunities. I think there's some good days ahead. I agree with you with regards to Jay, because for one thing, he'll listen to anybody. If you got to want to talk, he'll stop and talk. He, he stops and talks to me of all people and will listen. And I, and I email him when I, I don't email stuff all the time that I think was a boo-boo, but when I see something good, I tell him that. So at least he'll listen when I send something. And I think what he's done, because everything he said, we're going to do this and this time, and he's done it. In the past, that didn't always happen in IndyCar. They'd say they're going to do it, and you'd wait two years later to see what happened. So I think uh, I think he's a ter terrific asset, and I, I just in my back of my mind and some of his other racing ventures that the front office didn't listen, and I think that kind of irritated him. So he does listen. You got an idea, he'll talk to you. It's not a problem. I like that too. Yeah, it's great. What's next for you? Is this it? This is where you're going to retire? Oh, I don't know. You never know. It's, it just depends. As long as Curtis wants to. Uh, keep doing this. I, yeah, I'm kind of at, uh, it's up to Curtis. Uh, you know, we're doing a lot of great things here at the racetrack and uh, uh, hopefully uh, that, you know, this is something that we can continue for many, many years. I believe in it and he loves the sport. He lo He's committed to the town and the venue and, you know, we've added some great new people to our staff this year. Uh, that that takes the load off and having people who love the sport in, in here working with us. 
Um, I think, you know, we're, I think we've got some great days ahead of us. I think there's going to be some great things that are happening. I'm really optimistic for, you know, this year's event and what we can be doing on down the road. Uh, you know, hopefully TV numbers continue to improve if we get more people in the stands. Uh, still hoping for, you know, more sponsorship support. Uh, we have a great title sponsor with Bomarito. We couldn't, we couldn't do the race without Bomarito Automotive Group uh, and, and all the things that they're involved with. But, you know, we need to see more sponsors on the Midway uh, you know, more people getting involved and, and activating. And that's one thing I, I was going to, I just had a meeting a few minutes ago. We have no a, a arrangement in place at all with Javi uh, stores, but I was at a Javi store in Springfield, Illinois, a few weeks ago, which, you know, that's 90 miles from here. And just seeing the activation that that group is putting into motorsports, uh, you would think that they were across the street from uh, a racetrack with all the branding that they're doing for the uh, Ray Hall Letterman Lanigan team. Uh, it, it, it's, it's just tremendous the way their stores look and the way they're decorated and focused on racing and their employees are wearing shirts that have the IndyCar schedule on them. Uh, I was really impressed with what they're doing. I'm hoping that we can get some uh, more stores and sponsors like that engaged in the overall uh, the quality of, uh, you know, of the sport. I mean, if we could get, you know, five or six companies that are involved in the sport of IndyCar racing to take the approach that Javi is doing in the markets that they're in, uh, you know, the possibilities are endless. So, you know, again, I don't, I don't have a Javi store really in our market. I don't get anything sponsorship wise from them. But uh, when I see what they're doing, whoever is in charge of that program over there uh, needs a pat on the back and people need to be taking notes from them because I think that's going to be something that we can all learn from moving forward. Well, I think one of the things that needs to happen is these sponsors need to utilize what's available. If you got a sponsor like that where you can advertise, be it a fueling station or convenience or whatever it is, prop it up. That's one of the things we saw with Bomberito. Um, you know, Bomarito, as far as a race day sponsor and event sponsor, he does such a tremendous job in this market. When you go to a Bomarito location here in the St. Louis uh, market, there's 20 some locations. Uh, it's all decorated and racing themed, uh, with the, all the different uh, logos and flags and branding on the cars out in front of the stores. And you know, it's race day and you see his, he's already, he's been running promotional stuff now for over a month promoting the race. Uh, you know, promoting our brand, the IndyCar brand. Um, it's, it's fantastic. So that's what you can see from a track sponsor that's doing a job very, very well is, is Bomarito and his efforts that, uh, that John and Chuck are doing over there. Then you take a look at what a, a team sponsor is doing, such as the Javi with uh, Ray Hall Letterman. If we can just get some more people to follow those programs and be creative and think outside the box, uh, there's some good days ahead. Well, it's, it's amazing the how fans react. If they see a sponsor on a car, they will more likely than not buy that product or buy that service, whatever it happens to be. Uh, and, and, you, and you've got to take advantage of that fact and tell the world you're there. I mean, don't hide it. And I've heard a number of people say, you know who, what IndyCar needs for their promotion department and, and, and go-getter is you. They said they ought to talk to uh, – talk to Chris and get their marketing book and, and look how they do it, what they do, because any, any track is saying, well, gee whiz, we're not growing a crowd. There's a reason you're not, and you're missing something and you guys haven't missed it from what I can see. Well, we're just very fortunate in that we, again, it's, it's not just us. It's a collaborative effort between so many people, uh, whether it's Illinois or Northern South tourism, uh, they're actively involved in our promotion, what we do at the racetrack, what Bomarito is doing. Uh, then the support that we get from IndyCar and the teams, a lot of the teams love to help us uh, because they know that if they send the driver into this market, that we're going to utilize them and, and really maximize uh, their time and get them as much exposure as possible. Uh, you know, that's, that's what we try to focus on. We don't want to waste anybody's time. So we try to maximize everything that we do, whether it's uh, with our media buys to our driver appearances. And, you know, that's just, uh, it's really, it's, uh, it's nothing special. Uh, it's just, you know, hard work and uh, all of us pitching in. Well, I think it's very important to bring drivers in and utilize them, get them on television, get them to make appearances at a store, you know, get them on talk shows and promote the sport. And I think, you know, people get to listen to them. Like for Elio, for example, he's never down about anything. If it's raining cats and dogs, he's still ready to go race. Well, I think it's, you know, important to use, utilize them. And most of them, 
you know, their contract reads two or three uh, appearances, but they'll do more than that. The IndyCar guys are more than willing to help whatever they can do to help build the series. It's got to make life a little better for you. Yeah, and that's one of the things I know we uh, we upset some people because a lot of times we, we've developed a lot of great relationships directly with the drivers. I have most of the drivers' uh, numbers on my phone. I just bypass all the people who are their gatekeepers and go directly to them because a lot of the times I've in conversations I've had where I try to follow the proper channels, the, the message never gets to the driver because it gets filtered out. I just go straight to the driver. It makes some people mad because I do that, but we're getting the job done. And if that's what we have to do, that's what we're going to do. The driver says, yeah, I'll do it. What's the problem? Yep, exactly. It's so, the people who are afraid to ask me. It's the gatekeepers that uh, are out there. So <laughs> I do the same thing. I, if I have a gatekeeper that will follow through, I use them. If not, I go around. Mm -hmm. I've been hollered at a couple of times, and I said, well, you know, you can always get over getting mad. Exactly. We're just trying to make the, make their jobs better. You know, as well. better. So. Promote their driver, promote their products, promote their sponsor, promote everything. It's, it's worth it. Well, I can't tell you how, uh, how much I appreciate you taking the time. I know you've got a lot of things to do, but take the time and sit down. I, I am looking forward to a huge crowd this, at your next event for the IndyCar Series. Um, I, I can remember when we first came down here, it seems to me that the track started uh, cracking between turns three and four originally, if I remember right. Yeah, uh, years So you guys have taken care of that. Yeah, uh, you know, when we... Um when we first uh, hosted the IndyCar test, it would have been in um, 17 or yeah, 2017. Um, we had, the, the surface was older and that's what everybody, as far as on the NASCAR side wanted. And even a lot of the IndyCar guys wanted because you get the tire fall off. So that old surface is, you know, it's more abrasive and, you know, you can get the grip you need tires fall off quicker. So, you know, it increases the pit stops and the strategy of the race. Uh, and we did a lot of repairs to the racing surface, but we saw at the time that it the, it was just too old. And uh, so, uh, you know, after a May test, Curtis made the decision that he's not going to take any chances of having a race that, you know, had to be stopped because the tires were getting cut and there were issues. So uh, he made the $2 million decision that we're going to repave the racetrack before the IndyCar race. And, uh, you know, he went in uh, right off the bat ground up everything that we had here, new material. He brought in the best paving company that we've been able to find. He brought in the best experts. And, uh, you know, a couple months later, we're hosting an event. And then he's just continued to make more and more improvements to the facility. Uh, and he's working when fans show up here this year, they're going to see more and more improvements, more parking. Uh, he's doing a lot of work underneath the grandstands to improve a lot of fan amenities. There's going to be some uh, improvements in the paddock and garage area. So each year we're continuously making improvements. So, you know, that's the thing about it, uh, both myself and especially Curtis, this racetrack is a personal reflection of us. So if someone comes here and they have a bad experience or if there is a problem, uh, it's, it's our problem. It's an embarrassment to us if there were to be a situation. So we try to be as uh, uh, proactive and less reactive to the situations and, you know, always trying to stay one step ahead. So, so far we've been very successful with that and we're just going to keep doing it so that we can deliver the best uh, product for the fans and for the racers. Well, strangely enough, you're following in uh, what Roger believes in. He spent a ton of money at the Speedway and people that saw it said, wow. Yeah. And they said, you haven't seen the infield yet because you couldn't get there, but wait until you do next year. Yeah. Well, I thank you for your time. I look forward to a hugely successful event. Uh, we, we will do what we can do to let people know where you are, when you are and how to get there. Yep. Thanks for your time. All right. I appreciate it, Don. And, you know, hopefully we'll see you. We get, you know, a great lineup, uh, Indy Lights, the Pro 2000 Series, Vintage Indy, uh, Friday night, the NASCAR uh, Camping World Truck Series will be here as well. So it's, it's a great weekend, especially if somebody has a camper come over. We're really pushing camping because we've added a lot, a lot of space out here now. Uh, so come make a weekend out of it. Spend a weekend with us. And it all kicks off. Uh, we're having a fan fest on the Thursday night before the race at Ballpark Village, uh, working with the St. Louis Cardinals, because there's a lot of fans down there that uh, you know, we're gonna have some show cars and uh, different displays uh, to, so that we can showcase IndyCar racing to the baseball fans and hopefully get them to buy a ticket and come over and see us. Who have you got scheduled to throw out the first pitch? 
Uh, our guys are still working on that. I'm not sure exactly uh, <laughs> who it's going to be yet. Uh, that's usually one of those things that's kind of towards the, the the last part of it. You know, unfortunately, right now we're we're in a streak where uh, we're the third race in a row. So they go to Nashville, then Indy, and then here. Uh, hopefully, all the drivers are still uh, happy and enthusiastic after this uh, break that they've uh, had, so that they'll be uh, you know charged up coming into our race. Um, you know, it, it's it's going to be tough having. That's, that's the, the one concern I do have is the fact that there's, you know, three races in such a short distance from one another. Uh, but so that's one of the reasons I'm really focusing on uh, the, the quality of oval racing and that it's something unique. You can see the whole track, all of those different aspects. Uh, you know, that's that's what we're really aggressively pushing now in this last run, that we want to be able to, to get the fans to come here because we're unique. And uh, and hopefully that works. All the people that I've talked to have said, you know, we want to go. It's an oval race, number one, yippee. And from Indianapolis or Chicago or Milwaukee, it's not that far. Yeah. And one thing we're focusing on this year, too, I'm doing a lot more uh, promotional, uh, you know, with, with uh, iHeartMedia, uh, also our tailored media, which is our ad agency. They're buying a lot of uh, uh, digital and social media spots uh, targeting the Iowa area since there's not a race at Iowa this year, hoping we can capture some of those fans. We're going to be doing a lot of uh, promotion on, on the grounds at the, uh, the Knoxville Nationals this year, which is just a week before our race. Uh, we've, we were very aggressive with our chili, chili bowl promotion again this year. So we're hoping we can get those fans from those outlying areas. Tulsa is a strong market uh, for IndyCar and for us. So we're trying to go all those outlying markets to draw them in here. Well, you got to go this Saturday night to Knoxville because that's where the SRX series wipes up their season. And they've been packing the places they've run at. I mean, they had more people at Slinger this weekend than they've ever had. Yeah. And, that's, good, and Marco and Andretti, Andretti wins. Exactly. That, you know, that's, and that's one of those things, too. It's more eyeballs on a form of racing. Yep. It doesn't matter if it's a stock car or an Indy car or a midget. Uh, the more people that know about racing, it's the better for all of us. That's right. Well, thank you for your time. Look forward to a very successful weekend for you. And who knows, one of these days down the road, you get another knock on your door. And here we are. There you go. We appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks for being here. All right. Thank you. My guest has been Chris Blair, the executive vice president and general manager of Worldwide Technologies Raceway. The race is coming up following IndyCar event here at the Speedway. So uh, get your tickets, get on there and watch. It's an oval track, good racing surface. We have a good time. Until next time, we have some guests lined up for the coming time. So uh, stick around and you've let, I'll let you know when we're up and running. Until the next time, Don K saying thanks for being here. See you next time.